Hello, AP Physics 1 students. Welcome back. All right, so you just got done watching the video where the professor was taking the magnet and putting it near the beam inside the electroscope. Remember, that's really a beam of electrons, moving electric charges. And where the screen was lighting up green, that's where the electrons were hitting the screen. That was billions and billions of electrons hitting the screen over and over and making what looked like a, just a solid green dot. And you could see that the magnetic field was affecting the motion of those charges. It was deflecting them one way or the other, applying a magnetic force. This is a new kind of force. We've not seen this before. So in our handwritten notes, let's talk all about magnetic force. So here's the idea. I want to show that things are happening in three dimensions. Because as he showed, electrons were going one way, the field was pointing a different way in a different dimension, and then the force was in a third dimension. So here I'm showing a three-dimensional plane. Here's a two-dimensional vertical plane. Here's a two-dimensional horizontal plane, sort of cutting space into three dimensions. And I'm going to introduce a uniform magnetic field here denoted by capital B, and all these feelings are generally pointing to the left. I don't know if you can tell, but this is sort of pointing up and down, and this is sort of pointing sort of to your left, but also maybe sort of out of the screen towards you. If you're having trouble visualizing that, I, I actually drew lines on an actual physical folder. Here's the vertical part of it, here's the horizontal part, and you should be able to see this horizontal part is sort of coming out towards you. Here it is sort of in more three dimensions is the way we're trying to draw it in our notes. Here's the vertical plane, here's the horizontal plane, and why don't you imagine this entire region is filled with magnetic field lines produced by some large laboratory magnet. So this horizontal plane is not exactly, you know, sort of to your left, it's more towards you. That's really what I'm trying to show here. Let's introduce into this space three point charges, all positive, all moving at the same speed but in different orientations. So this one is going to be moving straight up, or really, as we're going to say, to the top of the page or the top of the screen. This one's moving to the top left of the screen. This is moving directly to the left in line with the magnetic field lines. As it turns out, this first point charge that moves to the top of the screen will feel a magnetic force this way, which is sort of out of the screen towards you, if you can imagine, or sort of, I guess, to your left, or really more, more out towards you. And this is our magnetic force, capital F subscript M for magnetic force. This second charge feels a magnetic force also towards you, but it is diminished in size. It's much less than this one. And the third one actually feels no magnetic force at all. So let's investigate what we can learn from this. So we're not going to derive the equation, but from this we're going to build up the, the equation for magnetic force. First of all, this only acts on charges. And so the charge will be part of it. We're going to take absolute value of the charge. The charges have to be in motion, so the velocity matters. There has to be a magnetic field. Without a magnetic field, there'd be no magnetic force, so we'll introduce the magnetic field. And clearly, something has to do with the angle. So here, the velocity is straight up to the top of the screen. The magnetic force is, the magnetic field is to the left of the screen. That's a 90 degree angle. Sine of 90 is 1. Here, the charge is moving in the same direction of the field. That's a 0 degree angle. Sine of 0 is 0. And so it's going to be a sine function here. So it's going to be QVB sine theta. Let's box that in for the magnetic force on these moving point charges. Let's pause here for a second, though, because you should recognize this construction. A vector times a vector times the sine of the angle between them, giving a third vector as an answer. And if you think way, way back, we've seen two other equations that follow the same form. You know what? Just pause the video and see if you can remember, remind yourself what equations follow the same form. Yeah, it was way back in rotational dynamics. We had torque, which is RF sine theta, and angular momentum, which is RP sine theta. You might recall both of those were a vector times a vector times the sine of the angle between them, giving the third vector as an answer. And there was a name to operator. That was called the cross product. And so this is really the cross product of QV cross B. Two vectors, sine of the angle between them, giving the third vector as the answer. We're not going to box this in, but just be aware that this follows the same pattern as other cross products. OK, so let's define our terms here. So F sub m, our new magnetic force, but specifically is magnetic force on a moving point charge. We're going to have at least one other equation for magnetic force, and each one's going to be in a different situation. So it's important that we define this only magnetic force on a moving point charge, specifically Q, the charge that's in the equation. This is, of course, a force, so it is a vector, and of course it's measured in newtons just like a force, like any other force, but it's only a magnetic force on a moving point charge. Q is the moving point charge. And yes, we are going to take absolute value when we put it in here. V is an external magnetic field, a magnetic field produced by something that we don't care about often. Sometimes it's given the problem, sometimes it's not, but as long as we know the strength of it and the direction, that's all we need. V is the velocity. We don't need to define that. Of course, you would define it on your list of new equations. And theta, well, any time theta is part of the equation, it always refers back to the two previous vectors. So it's the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector, specifically from V towards B. If you go back to how we did torque and angular momentum, it's to always define the same way. 
It's always the angle between the first vector and the second vector in that order. What about the direction magnetic force? Well, I mentioned things happen in three dimensions, and hopefully you remember in torque and angular momentum, we did the right-hand rule. That's how we do any direction for a cross product. We can have a bunch of right-hand rules in this topic, so this is going to be the right-hand rule for forces. Here's how it goes. We always point our finger, our pointer finger, in the direction of the first vector. That's going to be the velocity, specifically the motion of positive charges. And then we curl our fingers toward the second vector. That's going to be towards the magnetic field. And lastly, we stick our thumb out, and that's going to be the direction, in this case, of the magnetic force. So it's first vector, second vector, stick your thumb out. Why don't we go ahead and try that for this situation right here, right? So our finger, our pointer finger, our right hand is pointing to the top of the screen. Now, normally we'd say up, and certainly if you look at doing this with the screen, that would be up, but on your paper, when you drew this, and I'm hoping you're drawing all of this, it's not really up, right? The positive point charge is moving away from you. And so if you stick your right hand with your pointer finger pointing away from you, that's, that's just not up. That's to the top of your page. And so we want to change our wording. We're not really going to be using up or down very much unless we definitely know we're looking at the problem from the side. Because my up and your up just wouldn't be the same. So instead we'll say this, this point chart is moving to the top of the page. So our pointer finger is pointing to the top of the page. The magnetic field is pointing to the left. So you twist your wrist, you rotate your wrist around so you can comfortably curl your fingers to the left. Some people curl all the rest of their fingers. Some people just curl their middle finger and leave the other ones, whatever works best for you. Then you stick your thumb out, and if you do this properly, your thumb should be pointing sort of towards you. And I did say this horizontal plane is sort of pointing outwards towards you. So here's a picture of my right hand doing the right hand rule. Make sure you're using your right hand, right? You can't use your left hand for it. All right, so my pointer finger is pointing to the top of the screen with the velocity vector. The rest of my fingers are curled to the left in the direction of the magnetic field. I'm sticking my thumb out, and that's the direction of the magnetic force, sort of out of the screen towards you. Anytime you do right-hand rule, you have to form a full 90 degrees, an L, between your pointer finger and your thumb, because the force will always be at right angles to the motion, really to the plane defined by the motion and the magnetic field. Make sure you try this on your own, that you can recreate this. Okay, now, drawing this in three dimensions is rather difficult. So often we show it sort of head-on. So this magnetic force will be pointing directly out of the screen towards you. So we have to introduce a new way of showing three-dimensional vectors. Now, we always draw vectors as arrows. So imagine an actual arrow, like a, a bow and arrow, right? Let's say the archer, uh, using the bow and arrow. Where am I? Here we are. Okay. Uh, shoots the arrow directly towards you, right? So if that's happening then what would you see? Well, you would see the tip of the arrow. That means that you would see like a dot, right? And so this represents a vector that's pointing directly out of the page. Sorry, I may have had a little malfunction there. Okay, so here's a picture of my right hand doing the right hand rule. My pointer finger is pointing to the top of the screen. There's the velocity vector. I've curled the other fingers of my right hand. Make sure you're using your right hand, not your left hand. Uh, my fingers are curled to the left in the direction of the magnetic field. And here's my thumb sort of pointing out of the screen towards you. That's showing the direction of the magnetic force, right? I did say the horizontal plane is sort of towards you, right? So make sure you can try this on your own, that you can get your right hand to do the same thing. Okay, so it's a little bit tough to draw this in perspective every single time, so we're going to introduce a new way of drawing vectors, a three-dimensional way of drawing vectors. So imagine, since we always draw vectors as arrows, an actual arrow, like a bow and arrow, right? So let's say the archer strings up a bow and arrow and shoots the arrow directly towards your face. Now hopefully you duck out of the way before the arrow strikes you, but what part of the arrow would you see coming directly towards you? You see the tip of the arrow. Right, so we show that as a dot. Here's the tip of the arrow, often with a circle around it, although the dot is really the important part. Here's a vector coming directly out of the page towards you, like this magnetic force was supposed to be directly towards you, or your thumb was going to be pretty much jabbing, your, 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 jabbing yourself in the face. If instead, let's say you're the archer, you string up the bow and the arrow, and let loose, and the arrow flies directly away from you, what part of the arrow do you see? Well, you see the feathers on the back of the arrow. We represent that as an X. These are the crossed feathers. Sometimes we put a circle around it just to highlight it, but really it's the X that's the important part. That's a vector pointing directly into the page. So a dot for out of the page, an X for into the page. There's a more convenient way of drawing three-dimensional vectors rather than trying to always draw things in perspective like this.